Okay. Uh, this is my disclosures. And uh, I want to talk about uh, the long-term the follow-up result of the, the uh, capsulotomy for OCD and depression. Uh, I have experience of the lesioning and the DBS, and initially I was trying to make uh, the lesion in single loom like this, but it was difficult to make a thermal lesion with current technology. Thus, we need to move to the internal capsule. But when you look at the literatures, the target for DBS, radio frequency lesioning, and the gamma capsulotomy were uh, different. There was no consensus about you know, the the best target in anti-limo internal capsule for OCD and depression. Thus, I made the reason based on my previous in the experience of the, the DBS. I just make a region just above the nuclear circumference, so about 60 millimeter anterior from the anterior commissure. Uh, inclusion criteria is the same as the uh, previous reported uh, paper. And initially, we proposed in the six months follow-up, but we amend in the, our protocol for two years. Most importantly, we, take, we took the MR imaging at the baseline one day, seven day, one month, six months after the sonication. We recruit 12 patients, and one patient has failure of the thermal lesioning, and we evaluate 11 patients. This is typical MR findings uh, seven days after the treatments. As you see, there was a discrete and a clear region in the internal capsule, and the region did not uh, expand out of the internal capsule. Four years ago, I reported the first result of the four patients. And for the six-month follow-up, as you see, there was an improvement of the y -buck anxiety and depression scores. Recently, we they published the two years the data. And I'm sorry, this slide is somewhat busy, but the patient has typical OCD symptoms, and most of the patient has duration more than 10 years, and many of the patient has treat more than 10 years, and the, most of the patient has all kinds of the medication before some occasions. This is the, the result. Y box score decreased from 35 to 24 at the last follow-up. Depression and anxiety was more rapidly improved than maintained well at the two years follow-up. GAF also demonstrated gradual improvement at two years follow-up. When you look at the each data, some patients showed remarkable improvement Y box score. Some patients didn't show the remarkable improvement. But the mean score is about you know, the, uh, the improved a lot from the 35 to 24. And the white box score, six patients were responders. And depression and anxiety, seven or eight patients were responders. Uh, we evaluated the comprehensive neurocognitive function for the patient with OCD. We didn't see any cognitive changes, but we found in the improvement of the memory 24 months after the procedures. Most common adverse event of the procedures was the headache and dizziness. We never encountered any significant adverse event or behavioral changes which were reported in previous radio frequency or gamma cachelotomy studies. And we also underwent in the FDG pad in eight patients, and we found that there were changes in the right frontal cortex like this. We underwent in the same in the regioning for the intractable depression. Uh, we started in the, the first patient in September 2015, and we finished the studies in April 2017. We only recruited the five patients. One patient had the failure of the making thermal lesion. Eventually, we evaluated the four patients for, for, for an year. And the following is the inclusion and exclusion criteria. But we found that it was quite difficult to find you know, the optimal candidate of these procedures because you know, the 
the, my team, the psychiatrist, really made uh, very strict uh, inclusion criteria by the proving of the refractoriness, chronicity, and severity. Uh, we compare, I, I compared the, the, this in the inclusion criteria with the previous report data, but it was most strict in the uh, inclusion criteria in the literature. And um, initially, the, uh, we <coughs> proposed you know, the protocol for six months, but we also uh, amended to one year, and we underwent the same MR scan at the preoperative state and immediate after sonication, seven days, one month, and six months after the treatment. This is a snapshot images of the uh, <clears throat> MRG phosphor depressions. In the lower part, you can see the thermal lesion immediate after sonications, uh, one week, one month, six months after sonication. The region volume was maximized in one week, and the region was decreased to small size at six months follow -up. However, compared to the thalamic lesion, we can clearly see the visual lesion in the internal capsule at the long-term follow-up. And I reported in the first case in the biological circuitry last year. And uh, we, as I mentioned, we evaluated the four patients. As we expected, the depression and the BDI improved a lot. 83% of the, the depression was improved at one year follow-up. 76% improvement was noticed in the BDI at one year follow-up. And also the GAF, SF36 improved and maintained well at one year follow-up. And also we didn't see any neurocognitive you know, deficit at one year follow-up. Of course, you know, the number of the, these studies is so limited, but there was some increase of the body weight from uh, 67 to 74, but it was not statistically significant. When you look at the literature, there are four available lesioning procedures in the, in the world, and each procedure had advantage and disadvantage. Especially the, uh, the capsulotomy can make you know, the personality problem or neurocognitive you know, deficit compared to the singulotomy. That was the reason I was trying to make a reason in the single room first. However, when you look at the literature, you know, the, I believe you know, the majority of the side effect from the uh, capsulotomy was made by the uh, additional lesion across the internal capsule. However, in my experience, I'm sorry, in my experience of the, the thermal lesioning with the focus of sound for OCD and depression, we never make a lesion out of the internal capsule. I believe you know, that might be the reason we didn't see any adverse event. Of course, you know, there's a technical limitation of these procedures. In the morning, many people mention about you know, the SDR and instant beam angle. And uh, four years ago at the first meeting, I first proposed the concept of the SDR and skull volume. Uh, you can see the, the right low pictures. The concept of the SDR is the um, ultrasound energy can reflect in the outer table and the marrow and inner table. Especially if the patient has thick marrow, ultrasound energy can reflect in the, in the majority, only a small energy can enter the brain, can make effective thermal lesion in the brain. And uh, I published this data to the Journal of Neurosurgery year 2016. And uh, nowadays the STR and skull volume become the standard in you know, the guideline for the, the treatment. However, in this study, you know, the, we notice the another factor, so-called instant beam angle or instance angle of ultrasound ray. The concept is it, if there's a high instance angle, ultrasound energy can reflect in the, the skull. So cannot make you know, the effective focus and cannot deliver the enough energy into the brain. So concept is you know, the, compared to the uh, the left side is, you know, the, for example, the VIM lesioning. The right side is the, um, the example of the GPI or the internal capsule. 
if the target is out of the center, ultrasound energy can further reflect from the outer table. To justify this concept, we underwent you know, the Cadaver experiments, and uh, we measured the uh, ultrasound energy in the centers and uh, in the retro part. So for example, D4 is a center, and A3 is the one of the retro parts, and we measure the ultrasound in you know, the uh, elements in the centers and uh, the retro part, and when you compare the uh, <coughs> angle, or <coughs> instance angle about 25, center has you know, the higher treatment elements compared to retro part. It's quite similar with our, my clinical data. I evaluate 46 patients, and uh, among them, essential tremor has higher treatment element compared to the OCD, PD, and depression. Thus, we justified the concept of the uh, instance beam angle. If the, the target is out of center, the less cumulative element can be useful for the successful sonication. Of course, the, as I demonstrated in my slide for the depression, the pattern of the imaging was different from white and gray matter. And we published this data in year 2014. And also, I'm not sure the density thickness, even in the marrow, if the content of marrow is a difference like this, can affect you know, the successful outcome. We are now doing the, uh, the 3D printing experiments. We will see the result probably uh, in next year. This is a summary. I think you know, the, the focus sound in you know, the uh, thermal lesioning for the OCD and depression demonstrated you know, the uh, successful outcome without making any serious advanced events. Of course, you know, the, we need to overcome the, you know, the several potential limitations I demonstrate in my slide. This is our hospital and the, our center for innovative functional neurosurgery. And uh, I hope to see the in the World Society mean next year in New York. And uh, I hope to see all of you in IST meeting in, in Korea. Thank you. <laughs>